Imran Ahmed is the CEO of the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, thanks for being with us. You know the old saying, a lie makes it halfway around the world before the truth can get out the door. Are we seeing that with this blast at that hospital in Gaza? Well, look, here's the thing about lies. They don't just travel themselves. They have to, tr they have to be pushed around the world. So there are bad actors who are pushing deadly narratives around the world. That's from foreign states to uh, extremist groups, both foreign and domestic. You've got um, just people who like to cause harm, so people who, who, who get off on it. And also people who are doing it because they're trying to get more clicks, trying to get more engagement, trying to get more followers because they're trying to build revenue for themselves, what we call engagement farmers. So you've got all these bad actors. And then you've got platforms that deliberately take the most egregious and engaging material, the stuff that gets people arguing, the stuff that gets people going, no, that can't be true. Yes, that is true. And they push it into the mainstream. And those two things interacting have been the reason not just for this particular incident reaching around the world with major geopolitical implications, this nonsense, but also the tidal wave of disinformation that has so uh, filled our, uh, our phone screens. The information that was put out by the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry says 500 people were killed. Uh, has a call for a day of rage and response protests taking part uh, across the Middle East from to North Africa to here in the United States. Hamas is a U.S. designated foreign terrorist organization. How should people consume information provided by them? And how do you separate fact from fiction when it's coming from ISIS in the old days, uh, Hamas now, Al Qaeda? Well, I think people should be very careful about consuming information produced by terrorists, kidnapper, rapists, and murderers. Um, and I think social media platforms should be incredibly careful and perhaps think again about broadcasting that to billions of people around the world, having implications. There was a firebombing of a synagogue in Berlin overnight. There have been protests around the world. And, of course, we know that President Biden was told that he couldn't meet with the Jordanians. So, I mean, there have been major implications as a result of this. How did this lie get around the world? It got around the world because with most uh, news organizations, you'd fact check, you'd be careful, as you have been in reporting this story. It's social media, of course, that is this weak point in our society that's now exploited by bad actors, exploited by terrorist groups. And the reason why it's so easily exploited is because, sadly, for these companies, the attention that they can generate from promulgating nonsense and lies to billions of people actually gets them attention. And those eyeballs, they can monetize by serving them ads. It's really quite a sick business. What are some of the most damaging things that you've seen since this war broke out? In the last week, I've seen more dead children than I care to see for the rest of my life. And that, you know, we've been tracking telegram channels which are operated by Hamas and the Al Qasem brigades. We see the flow of those images and videos onto, onto mainstream social media, which are then pushed to millions, billions of people. And th that is having a considerable effect, most of it designed, you know, with wording on the post saying we must punish the Jews for it. This is what the Jews are like. This is designed to inculcate, to cause hatred against Jewish people and, of course, Muslim people too. And I think that what we are seeing right now is the globalization of jihad against Jewish people and the state of Israel, which is occurring on mainstream social media platforms and is going to have a real effect on the Jewish diaspora around the world. I think this is the most serious threat to Jewish life around the world and Jewish safety and their ability to function within communities um, since the Holocaust. I was sitting at my desk when, when the blast at the hospital in, in Gaza happened yesterday. I was stunned at how quickly uh, images were being broadcast across the Middle East and how quickly they were jumping to conclusion even worse Live streaming is, is now available to users on just about every social media platform, and that carries with it unique challenges uh, for people trying to counter misinformation. How can social media companies combat hateful and extreme content that is spread across their, their platforms? And let's be realistic, some people are doing it because they get clicks. 
Yeah, and those engagement farmers are the most cynical of all businesses. Do you want to know why they're so encouraged to do so? Why that's such a profitable endeavor for them? It's because companies like X and YouTube and others revenue share with them. They say, here's some money. All you have to do is give us eyeballs. We don't care how you get the eyeballs as long as they're consuming our ads and we'll give you a bit of money to go with it. And that is a that's an irresponsible business model if you're not confident in what those people are broadcasting. You know, all broadcasters, all newspapers have to take responsibility for what they say and for what they broadcast. Social media platforms uniquely, because of American law, do not hold any of those responsibilities because of a law passed in 1996 before social media even existed. The truth is that our legislators have let us down. They've let down Jewish people. And now they are doing significant geopolitical damage to the interests of the United States and its allies around the world. And th that, is, that is actually down to legislators now to fix the problem that they created in 1996, allowing the rise of social media platforms that take no responsibility right. for the fact that they have become the primary means by which hate and lies are spread in societies, not just in the United States, but around the world.